things is an examination of that world that we understand. So also what I am doing is I am, I am uh, breaking down the process of, uh, of what we see uh, when we look at objects and signs and so forth. The feeling of things is how I feel when I look at you, how I feel when I, when I look at my wet shoes, how I feel when, I'm, when I say goodbye to my wife, or how I feel when I walk into this show or into this room. People say that we think in words, and then sometimes people say we think in pictures. And I know that I do not think in words. I know it. I'm certain of it. And I know that I don't think in pictures because words and pictures are how I communicate to you, not the way my mind communicates to itself. That's a different thing. My mind, uh, when it doesn't have to worry about anyone else and it's just free floating through its thing, how is that? What, what is that? What is the mind doing? And I think recently, I mean in the last years, that we think in feelings. We understand how we feel. Whenever we look at an object, we feel something. That feeling is held in our brain and we feel that object independently of the sign of that object. That's how we can travel so quickly. They're almost, it's as if one is breaking down the world into uh, waves uh, of feelings and that that's the world that we relate to. So when I say the feeling of things, it's actually about the world. It's not about my nervous system. It is too, but the world comes first. Looking at the space, which is humongous, I mean, think of all the adjectives for big, and that's what this space is. It's the largest space I've ever dealt with. And so I had to deal with it. And as I said earlier, I mean, uh, dressing a whale. This is the first space that I've shown in where the inside is of the scale of the street. It is the same. Here, the space at the Bacocca, it is as if one was to encapsulate that scale and put it indoors, inside a space. So one cannot just assume to put up work as you would in a normal space. You have to address the scale. You just have to. And, uh, and rather than hide behind it by darkening the walls or darkening the, the, you know, the objects or putting islands here and there, I embraced it. I wanted to make a work that would run the entire length of the large gallery and uh, as one piece. Not as a series of little pieces, but as one piece. And that would be MIT, obviously. Here into the cube, I mean, it's a tremendous space. It allows me to show my rubbings. And my rubbings, they're frottage, and they're painted by rubbing the surface of, uh, of a relief, and then that image pops up to the surface, which an, a, with a frottage, I can put that picture on any surface and it would work. So these are all defining the space. So the space comes first. That was the first thing to do. And then what do you put in the space? Then that's the next job. And that's my work. And my work represents work. So the first work is the flags, the red and white banners, red, black and yellow, red, black and white banners. And they represent my cosmology, you know, heaven.
What does an artwork try to do? I mean, what am I trying to do by making art? Um, I'm trying to understand the context of that art and the context of my world. It's, it, it's not really the universe that I'm, uh, that I'm cataloging. All I have to catalog is, is, is in a way where I live, the world where I live. Uh, and that, when I, that, but when I say where I live, that's not just the physical world, that's the psychological world. Where I live is not just the universe, but it's the inside as well as the outside. And the first thing I make, I mean not the first thing, but one of the earlier pieces is this chart where I am uh, cataloging uh, five different interpretive worlds. Now, interpretive is an important point because they are not separate. They're simply, there's one world and we're looking at different aspects of it. So I can say that the world is primarily material. Really, when you get down to it, I'm a physical being in a physical world. Everything else is not really real. Um, so that's material. Uh, that's the green world. Then you've got the world. The world is a bit more complicated. Um, that's blue. That is where we are in a daily life. That's where I was when I was walking down the street in the rain trying to get to the train stop, to get on the train to come back out here. Um, that's the real world. Then the third world, uh, which is the middle world, because there are five in my, my work, uh, is the arts. This is when, or, or the world frame. Not the world on frame, which I just talked about. That's when I'm not thinking about things and I'm just living in it. Uh, I'm just reacting to stimuli, I'm trying to get through it. The next world is when things are starting to be considered. When you start to frame something, it's becoming symbolic. So I'm pulling myself out from the material into this other world, this meta world of what things mean. Uh, the world of brands, the world of, 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 of the arts, film, so forth and so on. So there's film, theater, dance, music, uh, where things are framed. The color for uh, the world framed is yellow. And I've chosen yellow to represent that because it's like light, it's like gold, it's the golden frame. Then the next one is uh, the world of signs. Now the difference between the world of uh, framed and the world of signs is that signs are not materially associated with what they represent. Uh, but in the, in the sign, uh, we have gone into another world. It has become language. It has ceased to be real. It is in another world. It's a different place. And so uh, a pictogram, it could be a word, a, a many different relationships. So that's the, that's the black and white. the red area, uh, it is not the object itself, but the relationship to that object. The object that is represented in the red area is a fiction. It is, it is a fiction and it, is, it, it, it represents that relationship. So in that area is that person, me in a trance state, um, which is totally, uh, you could say, psychotic. Uh, another thing that I represent in the, cos in, in the red is the cosmology. The cosmology of heaven, the cosmology of hell, the cosmology of death, the cosmology of life, the cosmology of fate, the demon, the angel. And, and all of that is a symbolic construction in the abstract of where I'm living. Where was I before I was born? What happens after I die? This is the structure. 
So this is all existing within the red area, the end. So if I say the world is primarily subjective, this is how I manifest that statement, is with the trance. Because the trance, when I'm in a trance, it's not a physical thing, it's a psychological thing. You really know it. And when you go into that world of the psyche, it is infinite. It goes anywhere, and it is, and it is absolutely, and it's a psyche that we're in all the time. We are in trances. Everybody is in a trance. You read something, you read a sign, any sign, anywhere, you're in a trance. It doesn't matter what it is, just say the word, you see the word, see the word uh, house. You're in a trance, a level of trance, but it's very slight, but your mind is already there. What the, what the hypnosis does is that it just builds on that fact and blows it up to the point of where you truly, in your soul, believe it. In the 90s, in the trance, uh, an emergence of a kind of psychotic figure, and I named that figure that person. That person has become one of, my, you could say, one of my pro protagonists in my work. So I always talk about him. It could be a woman, I call him that person. And that person has made art. That person feels things in a different way than I do. That person acts differently, has a different philosophy. And who is that person? And I call that person the icon brain. That's a brain that is really beginning and ending with signs. We live through signs. You know we do. We just do. Um, and we may not think we do, but we do, because we recognize our parents, we recognize our children through, the, through what they look like. So signs are important. Um, at one point in 1973, I thought to build an imaginary studio, and I put a stick figure name in it, and he would do things in his studio, which was really my studio. And I named him Glenn. I wanted him to be uh, separate from me, uh, to have an identity, that's why I named him. And he's a bit of an avatar, he's like that. He is someone who is me inside that world, that imaginary world. And I got this really minimalist, just the stick figure, and when Glenn uh, pinches his arm, he feels pain, and I sympathize with his pain. I feel it too, because I am him. I am him and I'm looking at him. I'm both. I am both the subject and I'm the object. If the world is a picture, then things are different. Uh, you know, which is very different from saying the world is an object. Um, that's my world, the picture. The pictured world is my world. That's what I've been doing. That's what I've been looking at. And that is the dream world as well. That's the, that's the psychotic world. That's the, that's the, that's the world of, of fashion. That's the world of design. That's the world uh, that we live in.